All right, we're going to combine all our signing cosine graphs today, try to jumble them up and challenge you a little bit. And uh, we're going to also introduce you to a new concept of vertical shifting. Uh, but before we do so, we're going to invest quite a bit of time of energy into just really refreshing and reviewing um, all the basics here. And so over here, we've got the sine curve on the left. And what makes the sine curve special is where does he start? Starts right at the origin. Um, and so what we have is we have root number one, I'll put r sub one, and then we've got our max, and then we've got our root sub two, our second root, and then we've got our min, and then we finish with our third root. So the sine curve over the course of one cycle has three roots, and uh, they'll pretty much go in, in that order unless we ne put a negative in front of the sine, and then that's going to reflect it over the x-axis. Uh, by comparison here, we have the serial bowl, the cosine curve, and he starts with his first max, then he hits the first root, we hit our one and only min, uh, and then we hit root number two, and then we finish with maximum number two. And so what we're going to do is focus on sliding these graphs up and down today, and that's what we call a vertical shift. So I think we're ready to get started. As a warm-up activity, before we really do any vertical shifting, though, I want to ask you, uh, you know, what, what are we altering here in these pictures here? If we focus on this one on the left here, it, all three of them, the red curve, the black curve, and the blue curve, are all sine curves. But what are we tweaking? It looks like they're getting taller and shorter. This is what we call a stretching activity, okay? We are stretching these graphs. And when you're stretching a graph, what you're doing is you're manipulating its amplitude, okay? So we had an amplitude of one on the black graph, we had an amplitude of two on the red graph, and then an amplitude of one half on the sine curve. Now what, let me ask you this, what do all three of those graphs have in common? They all have the same what? The same roots. So the max got taller, the min got lower, but all three roots are at the same locations of zero, pi, and two pi. Okay, so that's important to know. By comparison here, we've got the cosine curve. Again, the red one's the tallest one, got an amplitude of two. The black curve has an amplitude of one, and the blue curve has an amplitude of one half. So we're stretching them again. I get, what do all three graphs have in common? Again, they have the same roots. Where are those roots on the cosine curve? Well, right now, we got roots at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2. So I do believe we're getting more comfortable speaking in terms of radians. And we're gonna, it's just going to continue to get better and better each day we go. Here's another warm-up activity. We've got three graphs again on each set of axes. And then we want to ask ourselves, what are we manipulating here? What makes them all so different? Well, what we're doing here is we are changing or manipulating the curve's frequencies. And whenever you manipulate a curve's frequencies, you then directly affect its period. Okay. In other words, the period again is the number of radians it takes to complete one cycle. So let's focus over here on the left side with the sine curves. We know they're sine curves because they start at the origin. And what you'll notice here is the black graph has a frequency of 1. All right. Therefore, the period is 2 pi. The red graph, you only see half of a cycle right there from over here to here. And what you'll see here is a frequency of 1 half. 2 pi divided by half is, gives you a period of 4 pi. And then the blue one here, you'll see two complete cycles. The first one's completed at pi. We've got a frequency of 2 and therefore a period of pi. Same thing over here on the right side. We're manipulating the cosine curve's frequencies. And the black one has a frequency of 1. You see 1 cycle. The, the red one has a frequency of 1 half. And the blue one has a frequency of 2. So we really want to be comfortable manipulating a graph's amplitude and their frequencies. Okay, what I want to offer you now is a 30-second challenge here. I want to see if we can generate this curves graph over the domain of 0 to 2 pi. Uh, I want you to be very interactive here and hit the pause button and give yourself 30 seconds to graph it. Grab your iPhone, find the stopwatch feature, put 30 seconds on there and see what you can come up with without the calculator. And then come on back, hit play, and see if you and I agree and got the same graph. Okay, the first thing I saw when I looked at this equation up here is I noticed the, the leading coefficient was a 3, so we had an amplitude of 3. Uh, the frequency was 1 half, and therefore the period was 2 pi divided by the frequency. You remember that formula from yesterday. 2 pi divided by a half produced a period of 4 pi. Now, so the problem is they said the domain that we're allowed to use is 0 to 2 pi, so 
um, I'm only going to see half of this curve. And that's why you only see the upper half of the sine curve. We know that we're going to start with a root, we're going to end with a root, and halfway between those two roots is our max. And we had the ma max way up at 3, so hopefully your picture looks similar to this. Here's another 30 second example. Again, hit the pause button and then identify your, your amplitude, your frequency, your period. Your domain again is 0 to 2 pi and generate your curve. So right off the bat here, I said my amplitude was 1 half, so it's going to be a very short graph. Uh, the challenging part though is we have a frequency of 3, which means the period's 2 pi divided by 3. And this is a very challenging one to try to sketch. The bottom line is, by the time you get to 2 pi, we have to make sure that we complete our third cycle right at 2 pi. So right here is the completion of the first cycle, and then we got the completion of the second cycle, and then the completion of the third. That first radian, where the first one's completed, is 2 pi over 3. That's about 120 degrees, okay? And then over here at uh, 4 pi over 3, we've got our second cycle, and then 2 pi is our third cycle. So something, you hopefully you have a short graph with three cycles, and it looks some, similar to that. Okay, here's our last 30 second challenge. And again, y equals negative 2 sine of x. I want to see if we remember what to do with the negative, what impact it has on the graph. And come on back, hit play, see what we got. So the big key with this one is that you could visualize the traditional sine curve. Okay, and then basically all that negative is going to do is reflect it over the x-axis. So what used to be a max is now a min, and what used to be a min is now a max, and so I'm going to kind of do a little dotted version of what I think the new picture is going to look like. Also, the amplitude is going to be the absolute value of negative 2, so if that was a quiz question or a test question, we'd say the amplitude is 2, not negative 2. The frequency is 1, and therefore the period is 2 pi divided by 1, which is 2 pi. So we see one complete cycle. The only thing we really need to do is just make it a little bit taller. We're going to go as high as 2 and as low as negative 2 and make sure it's reflected over the x-axis. All right, we're finally ready to get into today's new topic now that we've really mastered um, all the old material. And our definition here is vertical shifts is the sliding, okay, not, and this is really important, not stretching. We talked at the, I think it was like the first or second slide, we said stretching means we're, we're manipulating the curve's amplitude. We're not doing that. We're sliding the graph either straight up or straight down. Okay, so that's all we're doing. We're just sliding it straight up or straight down. We're not stretching it in any way, shape, or form. Now, the general form of a trig curve, and we'll start with the sine curve, we used to say it was A times the sine of BX. Remember that? Well, now we're going to add a plus D at the end. It's not inside the parentheses. It's outside of those parentheses. And that D represents the vertical shift. And it's a very friendly... Um, concept. If you see a plus 2, you go up 2. If you see minus 2 at the end, you go down 2. So we'll go over a few examples here and get you warmed up. Uh, let's see here. Number 1. If I said y equals 2 times the sine of 1 half x plus 4, first thing is, what are we taking the sine of? There is an invisible set of parentheses here, and the invisible set of parentheses is hiding right there. And if you do not see parentheses, you are to assume that we are taking the sine of the first term only. Okay, that's an unwritten math rule. And uh, so what's happening is I've got an amplitude of 2, I've got a frequency of 1 half, but most importantly today we have a vertical shift of up 4 units. All right, now what does that look like if I try to graph it over the domain of 0 to 2 pi? Whoops, we've got to get, move the screen up here. Okay, so we're, again we're assuming domain of 0 to 2 pi unless, unless otherwise noted. And what I want you to do is I want you to draw your x-axis, kind of shift it a little bit lower. There's pi over 2. Here's the pi and the 3 pi over 2. Probably had crazy dreams about these radian values. And what I want you to do is I want you to go up 4 units, all right? And this is our new midline. And we're going to put a very faint dotted line in here. And our technical name for this is the midline. We defined earlier this week, we said that the amplitude is the distance from the maximum to the midline. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put a very faint mark for where pi over 2 and pi and 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi were. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that this midline is my new x-axis. 
I need to go up two units from there. We know we're going to go down two units. So here's what we got cooking. We've got um, we've got an amplitude of two, so we're going to go as high as two and as low, you know, two above and two below the midline. But our frequency is only one half, so we're only going to see half the cycle. So I'm going to start with a root and I'm going to end with a root. Halfway between those two roots is a max at six. And I'm just going to connect it real smooth and gentle like that. And that's what our picture should look like. Our next example is going to be another real challenging one. Let's talk about y equals 3 times the cosine of 2x minus 5. Again, the first question I want to address is what are we exactly taking the cosine of? Without the parentheses being visible, we are to assume that it's the first term only. The reason that's important, well, that'll become even more important in our next couple of lessons when we start talking about horizontal phase shifts and so forth. But anyway, on this particular curve, our amplitude is 3. Our frequency is 2, which then makes the period 2 pi divided by 2, which is pi. And then most importantly here today, the vertical shift is going to be down 5 units. So as far as my axes goes, I'm going to put my x-axis quite high this time so that I have room to go down 5 units. There's my negative 5. Now because my amplitude's 3, I know I'm going to go 3 above it to negative 2, and I'm also going to go 3 below down to negative 8. So my highest point is going to be negative 2, my lowest point is going to be negative 8. I'm going to draw a very faint dotted line here, and that's called my midline. And I'm going to essentially pretend that that's my new x-axis. So there's pi over 2, there's pi, there's 3 pi over 2, and there's 2 pi. And I'm just going to put markers where I think those values fall, and I'm going to pretend that the midline is my new x-axis. Cosine doesn't start on the midline like the sine curve does. What he does is he starts above it. it. Always starts with his maximum value. Now I need to finish that first cycle by the time I get to pi. So what I'm going to say to myself is I'm going to start with a max and I'm going to end with a max. Halfway between those two maxes is a min. And halfway between a max and a min is a root, both on this side and this side. And I'm going to connect them real smooth. Let's see, remember your concavity. We are concave down. Once you hit that first root, we switch concavity and we, be, we stay concave up. And then the second root, we switch concavity again. That's called a point of inflection in calculus. And we finish concave down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to repeat that cycle and talk myself through it again. We're going to start with a max, end with a max. Halfway between those maxes is a min. Halfway between a max and a min is a root on both sides of 3 pi over 2. Concave down, concave up, 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 and then concave down. And there are my two cosine cycles with a vertical shift of down 5 units. Our last example for the night is... Let's see, negative sine of 3x plus 2. What are we taking the sine of? Well, we're going to assume that we're just taking the sine of 3x. So it looks like that there, hopefully. And we'll go through, and we're going to say that the amplitude is the absolute value of negative 1, which turns out to be 1. The frequency is 3. The period then becomes 2 pi over 3. That's a real challenging one we saw earlier today. And the vertical shift today is going to be up two units. Now the other thing that I'm going to make a note of is because the amplitude or that leading coefficient was originally negative, we're going to say this does need to be a reflection over the x-axis. And I'm just going to remind myself of that. But it's really not the x-axis anymore. It's called a reflection over the midline. And so let's see if we can get this party started. I'm going to put the x-axis kind of low because the shift was up two units. There's pi over 2 if you can read it at the bottom of the screen. We got our 3 pi over 2 and we got our 2 pi. We're going to go up two units. We're going to put a very faint dotted line here that represents the midline. Let's see. Our amplitude, we're going to go down to 1. We're going to go as high as 3. Now, oh boy, okay. We need to finish our first period, by the, our first curve, by the time we get to 2 pi over 3. So what I'm going to do is, now, let's see, if I started at 90 and I counted by 30s, it would go 90 and then 120 and then 150 and then 180, right? So this 120 right here, that's the real special one. That's where my 2 pi over 3 goes. Because that's about, remind yourself, 2 pi over 3 is 120 degrees. So right here is where I need to finish that first cycle. Um, how does the sine curve go? Well, let's talk ourselves through it. It starts with a root and it ends with a root. Halfway between those two roots is another root. 
Now normally I would say that halfway between the first two roots is a max, but because of the reflection we're going to put a min, and then halfway between the second and third root is the max. And I'm going to connect those two rascals, and there's my first sine curve. If I went too fast, go ahead, rewind it just a hair and replay that, talk yourself through it. I'm going to change colors here just a little bit for the second cycle. Let's see, the second cycle is going to be completed at 240 degrees, and so let's see, 120, 150, 180, 210, and then 240 is right there. All right, that's 4 pi over 3. And so I'm going to put a little hash mark right there. By the, that's like my stop sign for when I should be completed. We're going to start with the root, end with the root. Halfway between those two roots is another root. Halfway between the first two roots this time is a min because of the reflection. And halfway between the second two roots is a max. So there's our second curve. We'll switch colors again one more time. Let's see, we're going to complete at 2 pi. So we're going to start with the root, end with the root. Halfway between those two roots is a root. Halfway between the first two roots is a min. And halfway between the second two roots is a max. Again, just perpetuating the same cycle we just had. And that's what negative sine of 3x plus 2 looks like. The maximum height is 3. And the minimum height is 1. That's another popular question on a multiple choice exam. The very last thing I want in your notebook here tonight is just a generalization of where the maxes and mins are or what's the maximum height. If they ask for the maximum height and you want to try to find a shortcut to avoid graphing it, then all we're going to do is take the vertical shift, we're going to add the curve's amplitude, and that'll tell you the maximum height. Uh, vice versa, if they ask for the curve's minimum height, and sometimes I like to do this in lowercase letters. I like to do maximum height in capital letters, uh, minimum height in lowercase. In this case, what you do is take your vertical shift and then just subtract your amplitude, and that would tell you the height of your minimum point or your lowest point. So there's two quick little formulas that you can throw in your notebook, and those may save you a lot of time on a multiple choice question.